In unit four, we begin doing one of the main things we're going to be doing pretty much for the rest of the, uh, the uh, semester. We're going to be doing hypothesis testing, and specifically, we're going to start with hypothesis tests with one sample. So a hypothesis in statistics is a statement regarding a characteristic of one or more populations. Our goal when we talk about this hypothesis is that we are going to test it based on the information that we gather from a sample. So let's take a look at some different hypothesis statements. Example 9.1, below are examples of claims that we could test to determine if there is enough evidence to support the claim. So in 2008, 62% of American adults regularly volunteered their time for charity work. A researcher believes that this percentage is different today. So making a statement, There's actually two parts to this, and we'll get to that later, but 62% um, of Americans regularly volunteer, and then the claim that the researcher is making is that the percentage is different today, and so that's something that we could test with some sample information. Option B, according to a study published in March of 2006, the mean length of a phone call on a cellular, on a cellular telephone cell phone was 3.25 minutes. A researcher believes that the mean length of a call has increased since then. So again, we've got our original piece of information that the length is 3.25 minutes. Then the researcher is making a claim that the mean length has increased. And that is the claim that we would want to test. Option C, using an old manufacturing process, the standard deviation of the amount of wine put in a bottle was 0.23 ounces. With new equipment, the quality control manager believes that the standard deviation has decreased. Uh, so in other words, it's more consistent. So again, we have the original information about the standard deviation, and then we have um, the quality control manager who believes that something has changed. And again, both of these things are gonna be important when we talk about our hypothesis testing. We're always gonna have an original piece of information and then we're going to always have uh, an additional piece of information that we're going to be testing. Note, we test these types of statements using sample data because it is usually impossible or impractical to gain access to the entire population. If the population data are available, then there's no need for inferential statistics. And so that's the word. Remember, inferential statistics means we take data that we have and we infer or imply something about uh, a population. So we take the data we have from a sample and we infer or imply some information then about a population. Hypothesis testing is this procedure based on that sample evidence and probability used to test statements regarding a characteristic of one or more populations. So the hypothesis is the statement, but then we're going to test that statement. In general, the steps for completing a, a hypothesis test uh, number one, we're going to make our statement regarding the nature of the population, and that actually involves two parts. Then, number two, we're going to collect evidence. We're going to gather sample data to test the statement. And then number three, we're going to analyze the data to assess the plausibility of the statement. So does that statement make sense with the data we've gathered, or does it not? And after that introduction, now we can begin section 9.1 talking about the null and the alternative hypotheses. So like I said, we're going to make two statements uh, in that first part. We're going to make uh, the first one is going to be the null hypothesis, and we denote that with H sub zero. Uh, this is a statement uh, that is going to be tested. The null hypothesis is a statement of no change, no effect, or no difference, and is assumed to be true until the evidence indicates otherwise. So this is uh, our statement, and it will always have an equal sign in it. We're going to find that out. It will always be like the mean equals this, or the standard deviation equals this, or the proportion equals this. The other hypothesis is called the alternative hypothesis, and it is typically denoted H sub 1. That's how it's going to be in our class. You might see it listed somewhere with an H sub A or uh, lowercase a or H sub uh, uppercase a. This is a claim about the population that is contradictory to H sub zero. So in other words, it's a statement that's going to differ 
from the null hypothesis statement. And we're trying to find evidence to support this new claim. So we will test the null hypothesis. And if the null hypothesis doesn't work out, that means this new alternative hypothesis will have to be true. In this chapter, there are three ways that we're going to set up the null hypothesis and alternative, alternative hypotheses. Um, first of all, the null hypothesis is always that your parameter will equal something. So that's going to be the same no matter what. Uh, but your alternate hypothesis has several different options. You might have the parameter, uh, you, you might state in the alternative hypothesis that the parameter, whether it's mean, proportion, or standard deviation, is just not equal to something. So the, the, the null hypothesis says that it equals something. The, null, the alternative hypothesis might say that it just does not equal something. We call that type of statement a two-tailed test because the alternative hypothesis would be true if the sample value gives us information, the sample data tells us that it's too high or too low, or that it's significantly higher, significantly lower than what our null hypothesis says is true. The next option is, again, the null hypothesis says that something's true, and maybe the alternative hypothesis says that it's really less than whatever that value is. We call that a left-tailed test because the only way that we could uh, find out that the alternative hypothesis is true is if the sample data gives us values that are significantly less than the parameter value that the null hypothesis states. And finally, um, we've got a right-tailed test, and in a right-tailed test, again, we've got our null hypothesis saying that something is true, something is equal, but this time our alternative hypothesis is that the values are actually greater than that null hypothesis, and we call that a right-tailed test. And the reason, just to give you that last option, the reason that we call it a right-tailed test is because in order to prove that the null hypothesis is false and therefore the alternative hypothesis is true, we would have to get values that are way over here to the right of what normal would, would normally look like. So remember, the null hypothesis is a statement of status quo or no difference or no change. It always contains a statement of equality. The null hypothesis is assumed to be true until we have evidence to the contrary. Our only two options when we do a hypothesis test are we are going to, one option, reject the null hypothesis. That's if our sample data says that this can't work out. The null hypothesis is not true anymore. Or we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. That means we do not have enough evidence to say that that null hypothesis is definitely false. So those are our two options, and these lead us to some different things. If we reject the null hypothesis, that means we believe the alternative hypothesis, let me write that in notation-wise. We believe the alternative hypothesis is true. Um, if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, that means we believe that H sub zero is true. Okay, now this is a little bit of a unique way to stay, say this. It's kind of like if you go to a court situation and you know, the jury comes back from delivering and they say, deliberating, and they say, uh, we believe the defendant is uh, not guilty. So in other words, they fail to convict them, which means that it doesn't prove that they're innocent, but they don't have enough evidence to convict. They don't have enough evidence to prove that they're guilty. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, if we reject the null hypothesis, that means we have enough evidence, and so we can definitely reject it. Uh, it's like convicting someone. Uh, if you fail to reject it, it means you can't convict them. You do not have enough evidence to convict or do not have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Example 9.2, for each of the following claims, determine the null and alternative hypotheses, state whether the test is two-tailed, left-tailed, or right-tailed. So we're gonna go through these examples that we looked at in uh, 2008, 62% of American adults regularly volunteered their time for charity work. So that's one piece of information. A researcher believes that this percentage is different today. Okay, so what we would say is our null hypothesis is that 
P, the proportion of Americans who regularly volunteer their time for charity work is equal to 0 0.62. Again, you're going to have in the null hypothesis, you always have an equal sign. It's a statement of equality. The alternative hypothesis is what this uh, researcher is claiming, and that is that it's different than that. So all we would say is that it is different than that 0 0.62. And this is the researcher's claim. Sometimes we want to make a note of that because sometimes they'll ask about the claim. So the re researcher is claiming that the proportion is not equal to 0.62 anymore. And let's see, is this what type of test? Well, since it is a not equal to, P could be significantly higher or significantly lower than that 0.62, and that would still uh, prove the null hypothesis false. That means this is a two-tailed test. So null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, which is also the claim in this case, and then that is a two-tailed test. For part B, according to a study published in March of 2006, the mean length of a phone call on a cellular telephone was 3.25 minutes. Well, that is our null hypothesis. We would, we would assume that it is that value still. So H sub zero, the mean length, so uh, mu, would be equal to 3.25. It's the same as it used to be. But now the researcher believes that the mean length of the call has increased since then. So the new statement, contrary to this original statement, this should be colons, not equal signs, sorry, uh, is that mu is actually greater than 3.25. Let's write that correctly, greater than 3.25. And this is, again, this is the researcher's claim, okay? And so since this is a uh, greater than alternative hypothesis, that means the only way to prove that this is true is if that lands way over here. So we call that a right tail test. Okay, so null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, which is also the claim of the researcher, and that is a right tail test. Option C or case C here. Using an old manufacturing process, the standard deviation of the amount of wine put in a bottle was 0.23 ounces. So this is talking about standard deviation. Again, our null hypothesis assumes that that standard deviation, sigma, is the same as it used to be, 0.23 ounces. The alternative hypothesis comes from our next statement. With new equipment, the quality control manager believes the standard deviation has decreased. So the quality control manager believes that sigma is now less than that 0 0.23 that it used to be. And again, that is his claim that he's going to want to gather data for and test. Um, since he believes that it is less than 0.23, the only way to prove that his statement is maybe true is if that would land way over here. So this is called a left tail test. So null hypothesis, standard deviation equals 0.23. The claim and the alternative hypothesis is that sigma is less than 0.23 now. And because it's less than, that is a left tail test. That is the end of section 9.1. There are seven problems there, and as you may have thought, noticed from the examples, it's basically we are going to be identifying the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, and then figuring out which type of tail test this is going to be. Two-tailed test, left-tailed test, or right-tailed test.